glad I have now. I'll be having, uh, he's running in a part of this uh, county, uh, a little bit of Hank City and, and uh, Larry Haven, uh, Auburndale, uh, Lake Alfred, Polk City, that whole area, uh, which comprises uh, something that I've uh, never been a part of before. I thought about it, but that was a great opening because we are, if this, if there's this dot, a point in time, that, and that's where we are right now. And we are headed uh, from a economic standpoint, from a spending standpoint at the federal level towards um, oblivion. We, we have this exponential train wreck that we're headed towards when we run out of money, we run out of cash, we run out of economy, and we become the grease of uh, of, the, of this side of the world. And so there's that little dot. And this, there's the election coming up. And so 50 years from now, nobody's going to remember me or anybody else probably in this room. What they're going to remember is, is that the day that we continued to spiral down? Or did that day did change? And we turned America. two messages out there. Here are the two messages that you're going to hear. And I'm going to boil them down to two words. Each message has one word. One word. One side says the most important word in the American language to our message is this, envy. And they base the entire message, their entire campaign, their entire uh, future on the word envy. I want what you have. I want this group against this group. I want this group against this group. I want this group against this group because we want to take from you what you have for ourselves. That's what envy does. And you watch the message, and I want you to be looking for that word. They'll never say it. But the message says it over and over and over again. Envy that person. Envy that person. Envy that person. Envy that group. And try to get from them what they have. And when you do, you'll be happier. That's their message. I don't believe that's the message or the word that represents the United States of America. I don't. But there are a lot of people that do. I think it's a bad word. Some believe it to be a good word. On the other hand, I think there's another word. And that word is aspire. Doesn't that, doesn't that sound good? Every one of us have aspirations. I have aspirations for, for myself, and you probably do too, but also for our, for our children and our grandchildren and for our neighbors and other friends that we have. We, have, we, want, we want and have aspirations for them. We want them to succeed. This country, above every other country, is a country that says, if you aspire to do something, there's a real possibility you can do it. And that's really what go government is not necessarily there to provide the aspirations. Um, as the president thought, that to all business, said to all business people, uh, you didn't make that. You didn't do it. The government did it for you. No. Aspirations in this country can become reality. And that, to me, is the way we leave this country a better country. My, my mom and dad gave me a better country and a better opportunity than they had. And their generation did. And you think about it, uh, the generation before them did the same, and before them did the same. But I, got, I have these town hall meetings all over our district, our current district, and I ask people, do you believe that, it, that your children and grandchildren are going to be better off than you are? There's just... Uh, of all the meetings we've had, probably less than a handful of people have said yes. Everybody else has said no. It's not going to be that. Why? Because envy has no room for another person. Envy says, I just want what you have. But both of us can't succeed. One or the other of us is going to succeed, and I want what you have. And then I take it away from you, and you've got your problems, and I've, I've solved mine. Aspire, aspire is much better. Matter of fact, I read, 
I was going to another meeting up in Lake County, and, and I saw on a, a billboard of a church, um, aspire to inspire before you expire. <laughs> so yes, we as aspire allows for both sets of people, both groups of people, both people, uh, individuals, to all succeed because we grow our economy, we grow our nation, we grow our prosperity, and everybody gets a part of that. That's the word that I believe is the correct word to describe America. That's the message we ought to be looking for, and that's the message we ought to be uh, promoting among this community. And just one last, well, you know what, I'm gonna tell you a story, and then and I'll be done. I told this uh, earlier uh, this week um, in a committee, because I was answering the Democrats who came to that committee and they were talking about tax increases, and they had this whole idea that it's government that, that makes you uh, successful. I said, I want to tell you a story. My dad, 51 years ago, left a very good job to start a business, an air conditioning service business in Orlando. He, he took all the money he had and he put it in the business. He, he decided that um, he wouldn't take a salary because he couldn't afford it. So he didn't take a salary for two years. My mom, who was a nurse, registered nurse, worked at what used to be Florida Sanitarium, now it's Florida Hospital in Winter Park. And she worked the, uh, in the emergency room on nights and weekends. She was the secretary during the day. I was the cook. Uh, my sister wasn't as good a cook as me, so I was <laughs> um, And I was 12 years old at the time. You know what? My dad made money. And if you compared it to today, it would be that 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 class of people that the, the president wants to tax. He made, it was because there's a tenfold difference. He bought his first truck that was $1,700, brand new. And the, uh, the service call he charged was eight bucks. You can come and fix your unit, or air conditioning. Now it's 80 or $100, so it's, it's, you can see the difference. And so he made thousands of dollars. But he didn't take his salary. And you know what? He never saw that money. He took the money, and what the president says, we should tax that money. And it was taxed then also. He put it back into the business. He bought some extra trucks. He bought a building. He did some other things. And he loaned it to the business. You know, 51 years later, my sons, who are the third generation, who are running that business, that money still there as a loan on the books. He never saw it. They pay taxes on it. They want to tax that money for every other small business who wants to get started or go make a living. What a sad thing. That is envy. And my dad aspired to do something and do something, especially for me and for his grandchildren, some of which he never met. So what do we do? How, how do we win? This is it. I'll tell you what I would tell you. Uh, this is it. Be a compass. That's what, I'm not asking you to win Polk County. None of us can. But it's on the I-4 corridor. It's where the decisions are going to be made. There is Orange and Lake and Polk and Hillsborough County. That's where, that's where the president's going to be 10 more times. He's already been here 10 or 12 times. He's going to be here 10 more. That's where Joe Biden's going to be. And that's where Romney and his running mate are coming. This is it. This is where it's going to be decided. But we don't have to win this county. Here's what I tell you to do. Be a compass. You have somebody probably that lives to the north of you and the south of you and the east and west. One of those are probably not registered. A couple others may not even be voting. They may even though they're registered. And others may not know who to vote for. Just take that. So that way. And then be a compass. When you show up at their door, if you could just do those those little houses around you, it, when you show up at their door, you are their compass because they probably don't know who to vote for and you can convince them. If we do that, then house by house, street by street, precinct by precinct, and then county by county, we're going to win. 
That's all we need to do. Understand the message. Our message is aspire. That's the one word that describes us. And be a compass. If you're a compass and you hold on to that word aspire, then we're going to win in November. We're going to do it. It's going to happen. We're going to do our part. And thank you for coming because we all need you. My election, I would love to be reelected to the United States Congress. But it's not near, near as important as replacing the President of the United States. It's, it doesn't it pales in comparison. We have to win that race. If we don't, our country is in jeopardy of staying on that same, remember the dock? Same spiral downward. We don't want to do that. So let's go do it. Let's make it happen. Thank you for being here today. Great to be here.